Hola, buenos días eh, a todos y a todas. Eh, Good antes de nada. morning, everybody. First of all, I want to thank you because we have a great audience for this one session uh, addressed at uh, the Culture Moves Europe call. Um, at the office, we thought it was interesting because um, quite often uh, many of those of you who are uh, there today who come to our office, uh, you see that it's quite a complex uh, program that you need to comply with several requirements and you need a certain mobility, you need to, to go uh, to an institution. And, and well, sometimes uh, it's true that this call is uh, 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 targeted at this type of activity. Uh, and as you know, this call, Culture Moves Europe, comes from a prior pilot call, uh, I Portunus, um, which was a sectorial call. Uh, it depended on whether it was for performing arts or other, other sectors. But this is a general call, which is going to be the fixed one to cover all different sectors. And so we thought it was interesting to organize this session today. We are very lucky because we have uh, Gosia here today, a representative of the commission who will present all the material, all this general material. And as it happened with uh, iPortunus, um, the commission uh, outsources this, uh, the services uh, through an open call. And uh, it happened with iPortunus and with this one, and uh, a, the Getta Institute got the got the, the the activity, and we have also a representative, Loli from from Getta Institute, uh, which is the institution that is managing the the call. Uh, as you know, we have an interpreting uh, simultaneous interpreting service. We thank some of our colleagues like Peos who joined this activity today. It, since we have the interpreting service, thanks to our colleague, Maria Leancos, which is also our usual uh, colleague working with us. Thank you to her as well. And as I was telling you, we're going to have an initial trans, uh, presentation by Gosha. Then we will give the floor to Loli, uh, who will tell you about the technical requirements of, uh, of the call, more the practical side of, uh, of the call. And then uh, we will have the rest of the session. We will manage, uh, we will uh, answer to your questions, Isabel and Carolina, my colleagues, and then we will have the case study. Um, uh, and I also want to tell you in the, on the lower uh, part of your screen, you have a series of icons. You see uh, World Globe, and there is where you can choose uh, the language of your preference. We um, suggest that you check, you click for the language of your preference at the beginning and you don't change throughout the session. And you also have the option of uh, subtitles. You also have an icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, says CC and you can uh, follow the session with subtitles, with automatic subti subtitles. Um, we always insist on these. At the end of the session, you will receive a survey. It's uh, very important for us. We encourage you to, to fill in and send this survey because it's very interesting for us. It helps us improve for future sessions. Um, and well, this uh, is all I wanted to, to say. I insist on thanking uh, our three guests, Gosha, Loli, and Anna. Uh, thank you for being here. They are the, the ones responsible for this session today. And we are here just to help them a little and manage the, the questions, uh, answer the questions on the chat. But don't forget that you have the the webinar chat um, where you can text your questions. We have a specific channel also as well for uh, the Q&A. So you have also that channel. So any questions you have, please do it on that Q&A channel and we will try to answer them or we will address them to the uh, panelists that can help you. That will be all on our side. Thank you very much, uh, Gosha. Thank you for accepting our uh, invitation and I give you the floor. Thank you, Augusto. So um, we are very happy to be here uh, today with you to introduce you Culture Moves Europe to explain the origin, the, the priorities we have chosen for this scheme. 
especially that uh, yesterday we have learned from this uh, survey that you have filled in that uh, most of you have never heard about Culture Moves Europe yet. So I will take this opportunity to briefly introduce and uh, present uh, our priority. As Augusta a bit mentioned, um, the origin of, uh, of Culture Moves Europe comes from Iportunus, but I, Iportunus comes from the need of the sector. So it started a bit earlier. At the beginning, uh, there were uh, several requests from the cultural and creative sectors to have a mobility scheme, something similar to Erasmus, but for culture. And uh, after years of uh, reflections, analysis, uh, the Commission decided to introduce um, the uh, testing uh, project, the pilot project Iportunus. It was introduced uh, in 2018 and tested through several rounds of uh, actions until uh, last year. Um, and so, as I said, there were several parameters tested to see what is most replying to your needs to uh, to uh, better uh, to propose better solutions for this mobility at the European level. Um, from the scheme, uh, from the uh, Iportunus scheme, we have understood that the program was very much needed. It was highly successful in terms of applications. And uh, we received very important, interesting feedback to see how better uh, prepare the new action. So as I said, it's based on the experience and reply to the specific needs. And of course, uh, nothing is uh, written for um, for eternity. We are still following uh, the feedback from the applicants from the current one. We are analyzing the applications um, procedures to see how to how to better respond to your needs, how to facilitate things and also um, uh, how to make it simpler. And this is why I will insist several times, I think, on the feedback, on the necessity of feedback from the applicants and potential applicants. As you know, there are several opportunities at national or regional level. There are many projects for mobility. They are uh, between two countries. There are some agreements. But what was missing What was the program at EU level, kind of pan-European program uh, open to all. And this is where we see the really European added value, because there are some countries, there are some regions that are very um, used to and they have several opportunities. And there are others where mo cultural mo mobility is not yet um, practiced to, to the same level. And this is also to to allow this collaboration between people from different countries, from different regions, and this is one of the most important aspects. This is the um, what cannot be done at the national level. Um, as I said, some compare this uh, the scheme to European uh, to Erasmus for culture. Um, so the idea is really to have it fully, uh, fully uh, flexible, and where you can choose the country uh, without uh, strict um, framework. Now, as we said, the scheme is quite new. We have launched this in October only, and it will be permanent. So it will stay as a permanent part of the Creative Europe program. Um, but the commission is not alone, as Augusto said. Uh, so we are financing the program from Creative Europe program, and we are implementing this together with the Geta Institute. Um, so for the moment, this is uh, the largest mobility scheme uh, for culture and creative sectors in the EU. And we hope, of course, that it will be um, growing further. Now about our pi pr uh, political priorities and objectives, I would like to insist on several aspects, which will be then developed by Loli when she will explain you how the scheme is, um, how the grants are being uh, um, implemented in practice. She will give you more practical details and now I will explain you the, the basis of those decisions. We wanted to have um, the scheme that is bottom up. We always say that it's demand driven, means that the projects are initiated by the artists. So there is no fixed scheme proposing um, calls for the artists. It's the artists who decide where they go, when, 
uh, for which uh, duration, how long they would like to stay. They will decide the nature of the project. They will decide, they will choose with whom they would like to work and which objective to attain. This is very important. It's linked also with the flexibility to offer a maximum flexibility for the applicants so that they can really choose, that they can shape this mobility to their personal needs and a link with their personal career, uh, development of their career. And this is why also we are uh, proposing a rolling call open for all sectors at one at once with long deadlines and fast, fast evaluations. You will see it from the presentations, from the presentation that you would like to have something that responds to um, that you will not lose deadline for example you have the the scheme that is open for half a year every year and you can apply whatever you feel ready with the project that is in preparation uh, when you have a date you have a project you have a plan you apply uh, this is why also it was crucial for us to simplify the scheme to the maximum of course we cannot uh, we can do more, uh, but uh, there are some limits in the simplification when it comes to the uh, public money. But we know that EU projects have sometimes bad reputation as being complex, hard to understand. So from the very beginning, we'd like to tell you that here we have a different ambition. It's different approach because it's a project uh, addressing individual people. So it's really mm, simplified to a maximum. Uh, you don't need uh, any special advice. Uh, you can reply to the questions uh, to the um, to the application form easily by yourself. Um, we also fast, uh, simplified uh, financial rules. We apply flat rates and per diems to make it easier for you not to be obliged to. Uh, um, proof every single expenses uh, to limit uh, the paperwork link, link with the financial reporting as well. We have simplified uh, application and reporting procedures. In application, you will see there will be only few questions um, concerning mostly your project, where you will be asked to describe your project, why you would like to go, where to do what. Uh, in a simple way, um, this will be in English only. But uh, we really insist that um, you may use, if you don't feel at ease with English, you may use uh, um, automatic translation and this will not be evaluated. For us, what is important is to get a message, not the, the, the language skills. And uh, reporting will be also um, much easier. Uh, however, we insist here on feedback from you, from the applicants, uh, from, well, here it will be af only for the successful applicants. Af at the end of your mobility, you will get a um, monitoring report to fill in. And this is very important for us uh, because this, your feedback would allow us to uh, further develop the scheme to, to better, better adjust to your needs, as I said. Um, so, our objective, easy to use for beneficiaries. And since um, beneficiaries, most of the beneficiaries will be individuals or small cultural structures for the second part you will see for the residencies, um, then it's, it's really important to have direct um, contact. And this is why get the Institute, the, there is a secretariat working on the, um, on the, on the scheme. Now, uh, I think one of our biggest political priority was to have this scheme inclusive, meaning it has to be accessible to all. It has to promote social inclusion and so that no one should feel excluded from the scheme. Uh, we are trying to offer grants for those who were, for different reasons, were um, so far they did not have maybe access to, to, to mobility grants, be it for the distance, for the family obligation, disability. So in the pilot tests um, phases, we have um, identified barriers to mobility, and now we are trying to address them. Now, how? So, of course, the barriers will exist, but to address them, we understood that uh, 
uh, money was the main obstacle. So we are offering additional financial support to help people overcome those uh, those um, uh, those barriers. People with disability will be able to ask for special uh, financial support uh, in relation with their specific needs. Parents with young children will be uh, offered an additional financial financial support to take care of the children or to to finance the, their needs. Um, also, uh, which is um, Another aspect very important for Spain, we have introduced uh, additional financial support for outermost regions of the EU and overseas territories. So uh, you have your Canary Island, uh, there are Spanish uh, outermost uh, Portuguese outermost regions, France have some um, overseas territories and people from those regions and those traveling to those regions sometimes feel that uh, they are not concerned by the projects. So this is why here we'd like to really insist on uh, that this project is open also for them. And we know that traveling from there and to those regions is more expensive, it uh, takes more time. And this is why we, we decided to introduce this special um, financial support. Also people from um, outside Schengen area, they will get a financing for, to cover their visa and those for uh, outside uh, EU banking area as well. As I'm saying, Mm, those additional uh, supports, financial supports, are meant to help uh, to contribute to um, to to allow this mobility. Sometimes they may uh, it may be not enough to cover all the expenses, but the the grant um, the grant is a contribution. So. Mm, our objective was to allow as many uh, grants as possible to uh, to be op as open as possible, and we have seen it in um, in Iportunus that s relatively small grants can make a difference sometimes. This is why uh, we have chosen this approach. Now, um, another very important political priority for us was um, to contribute to sustainable mobility. Uh, you have heard many, um, many times, I'm sure, about uh, the importance of slow mobility. And um, we know how difficult it is to put it in place. From the Iportunus, again, uh, we've learned that um, most of our participants, they were uh, very much aware of the challenges linked to the climate change, and they wanted to do more, but uh, often the money was an obstacle because uh, traveling uh, by train or uh, having a travel that lasts several days was more expensive and more difficult to put in place. This is why to encourage the change, uh, this time we are offering grant um, additional, um, additional travel fees for those who will decide not to travel by, by plane. Of course, for those from the, you will see um, in the presentation that follows that, uh, there is a special approach for those traveling from the islands when there might not be an option. Um, and this is very much in line with uh, general political priorities of the EU and of uh, and horizontal priorities of the Creative Europe program. We were trying to incentivize, and here we are pushing a bit more um, for this uh, green travel. And the last point, what was very important for us, it was large geographical coverage. Uh, when I mean geographical coverage, it doesn't mean only the countries, um, but uh, also specific regions more from, from and to rural areas, maybe uh, areas that are a bit uh, less, uh, have less cultural offers. Um, we will pay special attention to all those aspects. And as I said, Concerning the countries, we have so far 40 countries participating in the Creative Europe. Um, since uh, two weeks now, we have also Armenia who jo just joined. So we have 27 EU member states and 13 countries from, um, from Kosovo to uh, Norway, from Ireland, uh, Iceland to Armenia. And those countries includes also overseas territories and um, 
um, outermost regions of, uh, of some countries. Mm, and we will really pay specific attention to um, to ensure that the participation from less represented countries um, and will encourage those who uh, in the meantime do not uh, perform that well, will try to increase communication with them to promote the action so that they, they get to know uh, our program as well. So I think now... Um, it will be all for the introductory words, and uh, Lolly will explain you all those uh, more in details. Thank you very much. Perdón, estaba hablando sin micrófono. Te decía que... Sorry, my microphone was muted. Thank you very much, uh, Gosia. We were very interested about this uh, um, introduction, this uh, framework of the, of the call. Uh, so it's great having a representative from the Commission to explain all this. Probably we should have uh, tell you before the subtitles are automatic, so um, the quality is not great. Sorry, we, we, we apologize about that. But um, don't forget that the, the session is uh, being recorded and we will have some post-production edition and you will get a higher quality in that case. But what we thought maybe it was interesting for some people to, to use that, but of course it's not as accurate as we would uh, like them to be. Um, but if you want to access to to use to see the the session with subtitles, I inc we encourage you to 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 see the recorded version and once we upload it. So now we're going to give the floor to Loli, who will uh, tell us a little bit about all the requirements, and then uh, after listening to her. Uh, we will listen to the case study so we can see the more practical uh, version of it all. So after the introduction, now we're going to have the practical, the technical um, aspects uh, by the GET Institute, and then we will have Anna's case study. So I give you the floor, Loli. Thank you very much, uh, Augusto. I wanted to thank uh, Creative Europe uh, office in Spain for inviting me uh, to be here with you in this webinar. I'm very happy to see that there are so many participants, so many people uh, that connected to, to hear about this action. My lucky number was 22, so last year was very special for me, but I'm sure that this year for many of you, it's also going to be very special because after this uh, informative session, many of you are going to send your applications for Culture Moves Europe, and I'm pretty sure that many of you will get the grant. So uh, for my presentation, I'm going to share uh, a PowerPoint with you. I hope that you can all see the presentation all right. Well, uh, first, I'm going to uh, give a brief introduction, although with a gorgeous presentation, you all have a general idea. Then I will focused on the call that is open right now, uh, the individual mobility uh, call, which is the one that is open now. And then I will focus on the residences uh, call. Then I will answer some questions. So we got some questions in our uh, inbox, in our email. I'm sure that you are all also thinking about these questions, so I'm sure we can address those questions and answer them for you. Uh, well, Culture Moves Europe is the new permanent mobility scheme funded by the Creative Europe program, uh, and it's being implemented by the GET Institute. It offers mobility grants for artists, cultural professionals, and also uh, host organizations that are residing or uh, in or are going to any Creative Europe country. 
Uh, you have all the information on our website. Uh, it's not all the countries in the world, it's uh, the member states in the European Union and some other countries that have agreements with the Creative Europe program. And well, uh, the, we work in the sectors of architecture, cultural heritage, uh, design and fashion design, literary translation, music, visual arts and performing arts. Um, it also aims to uh, foster sustainable and inclusive uh, uh, mobility. And we give uh, particular attention to emerging creators, those uh, new creators that want to to, to improve uh, their, uh, to, to develop their career. As I told you, we have two different actions, the individual mobility action, which was already open in October 2022, uh, which uh, will offer 6,000 6, grants for artists. And then we have the residency action, with approximately 1,000 grants, and which will be open in uh, at the beginning of this year, 2023. We're going to focus on the individual mobility action. You can send two different kinds of applications. You can apply for this grant by yourself or in groups of up to five people, depending on whether it's uh, just a single person. You can travel between seven to 60 days. Uh, if the application is for a group, probably you can uh, uh, increase that duration uh, to in between seven to 21 days. Uh, a more practical aspect for the application. Uh, the evaluators who will be assessing your application, they are going to see that the number of days makes sense for the time for the kind of project that you're presenting because uh, many people sometimes they send an application for 60 days but it doesn't make sense for their type of project uh, if the evaluators think that that it doesn't make sense that you're going to receive a lower score so i think this is important it's important to adjust the duration for really for what you need for the project uh, it's uh, an open call, uh, which means that you can send your application at any moment until the final deadline, which is uh, May 31st, 2023. And then we will open two new calls, one in September this year, which will be open until May 2024, and then another one in uh, September 2024 to February 2025. Here, I uh, also think it's necessary for you to know that you can only send one application uh, in each call. This means if you send an application in this call that is open now until May uh, 2023 and it's rejected, then you cannot send a new one during this call, but you can send another, a new one in the next call the one that opens in September 2023, because many people think, well, that's it, I cannot send any other application. And it's not like that. You can send it for the for the next call, right? You have three opportunities for the uh, uh, Culture Moves Europe uh, program. To send your applications, <coughs> there are some requirements. You have to be uh, over 18 years old. You have to be a legal resident and willing to go to a creative Europe country. We've received some applications to go to Mexico or the US. Please uh, pay attention to this because if you uh, choose a country which is not included in the list, the, the application will be rejected right away. So here I think uh, I'm going to anticipate, uh, um, Loli, I'm, I'm Spanish, but I live in France. How did I send the application? Well, on your online form, you're going to be asked about your uh, home of origin are your residence, uh, the place where you reside, okay? So if you live in France, it's important that you say that you live in France. In your case, for example, if you would like to travel to Spain, it would be possible. What it's uh, not possible is for you to uh, live in Spain, be Spanish and wanting, uh, willing to be uh, travel to another place in Spain. That's that's not possible, okay? It has to be uh, international. 
Uh, instead, you can have here you have the countries that are included. You also have on our social networks and on our website. And another important thing is that the application needs to be filled in English, but uh, we are not going to evaluate, as Gosha mentioned already, uh, the English level or quality is not going to be uh, assessed. That is not a, a factor. So please don't worry about that. Don't miss the opportunity just because of uh, your level of English. Use any automatic translation tool um, that you can find to do this. Don't worry about it. I, I encourage you to do so. Uh, another thing is, well, you can send one application per call and per individual. Uh, you cannot send two different ones. And the beneficiaries from uh, iProtuna's uh, grant uh, are eligible, but they are not prioritized. Uh, of course, we always want to give opportunities to new artists who did not have a grant like this before. And uh, of course, well, if you have uh, a grant, if you are a beneficiary of a grant uh, of Culture Moves Europe, then you cannot send another application for uh, the next call in September or for the next one. OK, so once you have uh, received one, uh, you cannot apply for another one. And of course, we provide no support to projects uh, that took place in the past. It has to be a new project that is going to be implemented in the future. Okay. Also to uh, include uh, people residing in uh, Ukraine or wanting to travel to Ukraine due to their difficult political situation right now, we offer um the opportunity for uh, virtual mobility actions this is an exceptional circumstance uh, i will explain a little bit more about about this virtual mobility option we have uh, one really main role in uh, culture moves europe in our team which is one project one partner one destination each uh, application needs to be for a single project. It cannot be for several. And you can only have one international uh, collaborator, which will need to be residing in the destination country. Uh, you cannot implement a project on your own. You always need to have an international partner in the destination country. Uh, the, that partner needs to prove that uh, he or she is willing to cooperate with you, to collaborate, and that it's a solid project. Once that you fill in the form, you're going to fill in the form, and you will have to explain the, the objective for your project to, to explore, to create, to learn, or to connect. It's not like this in many people, but really my, my project has many different objectives. Uh, no, 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 we understand that, but there needs to be a priority, okay? I'm sure that many pro projects have many different objectives, but it needs to be, uh, there needs to be a main one, and then you can, so you have to tell us what is the main pillar, uh, the main objective of your project. That's what the, the evaluators want to see. Who can be the international partner that I'm going to work with? Mm, a very good positive thing about Culture Moves Europe is that uh, we give total freedom to the artist. We, we don't define anything. The artist is the one who knows what they want to do, and uh, they know who is the best person to help them with that. So it can be a fellow artist uh, that they've worked with before, uh, they loved it and they want to work together again. Well, great. It can be an organization, it can be a museum, it can be a venue, uh, any individual or, or institution, okay? But what we are going to ask for is uh, proof of, of the partnership that, that that collaborator is willing to cooperate with us to work with us in the project that proof can also be can be anything okay it can be an invitation letter uh, 
a confirmation of a meeting. Uh, it can be an email, an agreement, but a little secret. <laughs> uh, we pref they, they prefer uh, official documents with uh, their stamps. Obviously, an email is okay, but evaluators always uh, trust uh, more uh, a document that is more official, that, lo that looks more official, okay? Well, that's about the sectors. The sectors that can uh, uh, opt to these uh, grants are architecture, cultural heritage, design and fashion design, literary translation, music, performing arts, and visual arts. I'm going to uh, mention here as well, many people working in the visual arts sector, they are concerned whether they can, uh, audiovisual sector, sorry, uh, the audiovisual sector, unfortunately, is not included in the uh, Culture Moves Europe. It's not because we don't like people working in the movies, uh, in the cinema industry. It's because uh, in the European Commission, anything related to audiovisual belongs to a different directorate. Okay, so it's not included in the in the education directorate, in the culture and education directorate. So that's that's why. Um, however, uh, projects that are related to the audiovisual, but this sector, the main sector of the activity is one of these, could be eligible. Okay, for example, someone who wants to produce an educational video for a museum for example that could be uh, that could be done so how can this uh, mobility what are the mobility conditions it has to be an interrupted mobility which means you cannot go for five days now and then 10 days in two months time that's not possible it has to be in one single period and only to one country, as I said before, okay, the country where your uh, international partner is. The mobility can take place at any given moment, but it has to be within the year after you sign the agreement. If your project is chosen, uh, Getter Institute will send you an agreement with a date and Starting from that date, you have a year to uh, implement your project. Of course, in the application, they will already ask you about the dates, uh, some uh, estimated dates, uh, but then you can change those dates if uh, there are any, if you need to do any changes, obviously uh, informing about it to uh, the Culture Moves Europe team. At the end of the activity, you need to uh, fill. Uh, you need to to fill in and send an activity report. Uh, you will find a very easy questionnaire. It's not like a very long report that you have to elaborate yourself. It's a very quick uh, uh, questionnaire. We're, we're going to ask you about for for pictures of the project, all the proof. Uh, documents of your travel and uh, any expenses so we can uh, well check that actually the mobility action took place and uh, as I said before uh, well the possibility to change is limited to force major situations like well war natural disasters uh, COVID again <laughs> God hopes not and uh, well in those cases we will allow for changes uh, uh, if not, the artist may uh, withdraw and and and, uh, and uh, resign from from the grant. You have the link there on the screen uh, to apply. Uh, we will send you this uh, PowerPoint so you can access the the website. If not, you will use you you type on Google what you see here on the presentation. Then you create an account, you choose the call because in the Get Institute we have different calls. You would have to choose a Culture Moves Europe call and you fill in the, the application. 
you can uh, you can stop you can pause and save it and finish it later you don't have to do it uh, uh, in one single connection but i do suggest that you read the call very well you check what documents you're gonna need and to have everything uh, more or less ready to to for the moment when you're gonna send the application and then the most interesting thing for the artists, how much am I going to receive, okay? Mm, well, uh, since as we said, we want to adjust to the particular needs of every artist, we have, there are different options. We, the, the, the grant is divided in two parts. We have uh, some part for the, for the transport, for the travel, and then for the stay. We're going to take into account the kilometers in between your uh, residence and your destination place. If it's less than 600 kilometers, you're going to receive 350 euros. And you will not be allowed to travel by plane. The, uh, the sustainable travel, will, as we call it in, uh, in our institution, will be uh, compulsory. If it's between 600 kilometers and 5,000 kilometers, you will receive 350 euros as well, but you can uh, access another 350 additional uh, uh, grant uh, for green travel. But if the person wants to travel by plane, it's also possible in this case, then you will receive a, a compensation fund. Then for uh, people traveling for more than 5,000 kilometers, you still have the option to do it, to, to, to travel green, uh, even if maybe you're going to have to travel for several days. But we will offer um, uh, a fixed amount of 700 euros, uh, whether you travel by plane or not. That's the fixed amount in that case. And then the daily allowance, we will uh, offer 75 euros per day, depending on the uh, number of days that your project needs for meals, uh, transportation. Uh, we're not going to ask uh, in what you spend that money that's for you, that's uh, pocket money for you. And well, some people decide to invest that money in material for the project or other people, maybe they don't need any material. Um, well, it's, it's your decision. But we will ask you for, uh, well, for proof documents that you took the train. And sometimes they told me, well, I need to take a train, uh, uh, bike and, uh, well, we are always going to ask for proof document from the um, origin, place of origin and destination. We need all the route covered with those proof documents. Okay, we need to control all that to to check to double to, to, to check that you actually made it to the destination. And then also uh, to be inclusive and sustainable, we are also offering extra uh, costs, extra uh, support. For example, artists with a disability, in that case, uh, the amount may be uh, up to twice the amount, but we need those people to contact Culture Moves Europe and they have to explain what are the additional needs, the extra needs they have and what's the cost of those extra needs. Then we have the green top up, as I explained before, for all transports, uh, uh, except airplane, for people traveling uh, more than 600 kilometers. Then as Gosha um, uh, explained for outermost regions as well, or overseas countries. And here as well, the Canary Islands, uh, guys, you have that supplement. I want to receive a lot of applications from the Canary Islands because in Spain, uh, actually, yes, we have a region that can benefit from this uh, 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 extra uh, grant. And also for people, well, maybe it's coming from countries or the, the need a visa, right? People residing in Spain, but someone from Brazil residing in Spain who needs a visa to go to Armenia, for example. Well, you have the visa top up as well to 80, uh, for, for 80 euros. Also family support for 
ANCP with young children below the age of 10, but this is not um, per kid. It's a fixed aid of 100 euros, okay? Uh, any individual asking for these uh, top-ups, we will ask for uh, proof documents for all these, okay? Uh, children's passports, uh, visa document, everything. When am I going to receive this uh, money? Because I need it, right, to, to, to implement my action. Well, you will receive, uh, once your project is uh, selected and we've contacted you, we will send you 75% of the grant, including the disability top up. And then once all the project has uh, finished, then the Culture Moves Europe team checks all the proof documents, uh, transportation, uh, uh, housing and everything. And we will send the 25% left of the payment plus all the other top-ups except for the disability top-up which is paid at the beginning as i said as i said before um, applicants uh, residing in ukraine or having a ukraine as a destination uh, for the implementation of their project can have the option of the uh, physical mobility with all the payments, all the top-ups that I explained up to now, but they can also, maybe if the person wants to go to a region with a higher risk and they want to have the option of a of virtual mobility action, well, in this case, the uh, grant is 35 euros per day without the option of that uh, uh, top up or the travel expenses because well this uh, would be uh, for uh, well uh, expenses that you have when you when you stay and you do it from home uh, internet connection or to contribute to the organization that is collaborating with you so it's uh, the decision of the of the participant as I explained before, this is a continuous uh, call, an open call that is open until uh, the end of May 2023. You have uh, an orientative calendar. It's the one you can see here. Um, at the end of each month, uh, the last day in each month is considered uh, a deadline. And after that, all the applications uh, are sent to the evaluators, the last day in each month. Then we have two weeks for the evaluation phase. After that phase, all the applications are sent to a jury and that jury will decide the final list of people selected for the grant of beneficiaries. Then the results are communicated to the participants and we move to the preparation and the distribution of the grants agreements and the first payments. That can also be around two weeks, okay? So we always recommend you to send your application around three months before your project is supposed to start to make sure that we have enough time for all this process, uh, that there are no uh, problems that we are not in a hurry to, to get the money because the project is already starting. And about the residency action, uh, as I said before, there's not a lot of information yet. Uh, so please follow Culture Moves Europe on our social media so you can be updated about the information, the new information for this action. What we do know is that there are going to be three kinds of uh, residencies, short-term, long-term, and extended residencies. You have the time that corresponds to each of them, okay? Uh, one to three months, three to six, and six to 10. Those will be the, the options. And then about the grant that you can uh, receive, we have also a travel green mobility uh, uh, top ups it's it will be the same as uh, for the individual action then there will be a supplement uh, cost for 
host organizations uh, for which will be 150 uh, sustenance per week then accommodation 200 euros per week uh, in the host organization the the host organization will have will receive 20 percent of the travel and sustenance amounts well, that, that, that will be it. Please follow us on social uh, media so you can receive the information as soon as we have it, if it, this is the option that you are interested in. And then some uh, frequently asked questions that we receive on our email account. Uh, does the host uh, international partner receive funding too, or is just the traveling artist? Well, in the case of this action, the, the call for, we offer the, the grant only for the traveling artist. If the uh, international partner or the host organization uh, needs that support as well, we will know in the, in the next call, maybe. Um, and then some people, well, they don't know who they can work with. Some people, yes, maybe they have a greater experience. They know an, an organization they are interested in. But some of the people, they don't, they know what they want to do, but they don't know with whom they can uh, collaborate. So in this case, we suggest you visit the trans artist website. Uh, we used it with iPortunals last year. And in, on this website, you can see some organizations. They, you can maybe contact them to see whether you can collaborate with them. And also, some of the people, they ask whether they can have more than one international partner. But the answer is no. As I said, uh, remember, you can have one application pair, one project pair, one uh, uh, international partner. And as I also said before, many people working in the audiovisual sector, uh, they have projects they, which are related to the sectors that are eligible for this call. As long as you can justify, uh, this, is, this is very important. If you can really justify um, this uh, relation with uh, the other sectors, right? If you have projects in the audiovisual sector, but they are related to cultural heritage, for example, you have really to justify that relation. You really need to justify that it's not an audiovisual project, okay? In that case, if you can do that, those could be eligible applications. Also, many people are concerned whether, well, I'm traveling by plane, is it going to affect the evaluation of my project? Well, that would be um, negative for our uh, uh, priority of inclusion. Uh, obviously, if you're um, traveling to a very distant destination, obviously you're going to, it's difficult to, um, green travel sometimes, so this is not going to affect the evaluation. If you really prefer to uh, travel by plane, you will not get the the sustainability top up. But you can, but it's your decision, okay? And also, many people think that maybe if they send their uh, application now, they have to travel right away. No, it's not like that. You can send your application now and travel uh, in a year. You, as we said, you have a whole year to implement the project um, after the after signing the agreement. Uh, so I encourage you to send your applications already, even if you have to travel in December, right? If you if you already already have a clear idea, you know what the project is going to be. Uh, I encourage you to send the application or now. Um, and also, well, as I said before, we, we actually suggest to send the, the application at least three months in advance. That would be all on my side. Uh, if you have any other questions, obviously this session is for you to have the opportunity to ask your questions. And if you have uh, even more, of course, you have the uh, frequently asked questions section of the commission. You can also contact our colleagues in uh, the Creative Europe office in uh, in Spain, you can send us an email as well at culturemoveseurope at gete.de. It's true that we receive a lot of emails and sometimes we are a little slow in getting back to you, but we answer everyone. 
uh, I also wanted to tell you that from uh, the GET Institute, we have Q&A questions. We call them question time. And we have them every Friday at 11 uh, via Zoom as well. You can uh, uh, access those sessions uh, through this link. You can also find them on Instagram. And if not, you can also send us a message uh, through your account from the Goethe application portal. So you have a thousand ways to contact us. If you have a question, there's no excuse. You can contact us. Also here you have all our uh, all the links for our social media. You can uh, access there. Basically, it's uh, you type culture moves Europe and you, you will find us. That will be all on my side. I'm, I'm eager to listen to all your questions. I give the floor back to Augusto. Thank you very much, Loli. Very clear. We also insist from our office and the program, please not be try not to click all the sectors, just focus on one sector, uh, list your ideas clearly and don't wait for the very last minute. So very useful also, as you said that that uh, Q&A sessions that you mentioned that you organize on Friday, they, they are very interesting also for us uh, uh, as an office, because sometimes we can uh, use the information you provide for answering some questions that we need help with. So, so very interesting. Thank you. We see that many of the questions uh, are on the chat. Uh, they should be on the Q&A section. Um, but many, many of the questions are addressed to the panelists. So we will transfer them to the Q&A uh, section from the chat. Something else, maybe it wasn't clear enough at the beginning, you can also uh, raise your hand and uh, open your microphone to ask your questions, but please uh, let us know before beforehand on the chat so Nacho can enable your user to be able to use the microphone, okay? You, you, you can do it, but, but you need to tell us uh, beforehand. We have uh, covered the first part, second part already. And uh, now we will uh, share with you the study case with Ana del Valle, beneficiary of uh, this action. And who actually, she still didn't have her residency, but she's going to tell us a little bit about what she thinks that can be interesting for you. Uh, so, Ana, I give you the floor. Tell us how your experience has been uh, through Culture Moves Europe. Thank you, Augusto. And thank you, everyone. Uh, to me, everything was positive, actually. No negative aspects at all, because it's very clearly explained. The process is very fast. I encourage you all. Uh, to apply for it, whether you are in the end a beneficiary or not, just putting your your project down in writing, it always helps you. So, so do fill in an application. It's going to help you even if you don't get the grant in the end. Um, I told myself I'm going to apply in the first call. Although my project is in August, I'm a painter and the project is uh, in a cultural center in a a village in Finland, 400 kilometers away from Helsinki. And even if it's in the summer, I, uh, I said, well, I, I prefer to know whether I'm going to get the grant or not. And I so I applied for the first call. So even if you think it's still a little bit far away, send the application. If you have a clear idea, you will start writing down your project and, and, and apply for, for the grant already. Something that helped me was that I typed the questions of the of the call on a Word document, uh, so I could take my time in answering the questions. Maybe each day, I answered a, a question, and then I started copying everything and I sent it. But it's it's very easy, very easy questions, very relevant questions that will help you also focus the the project that you want to implement. And uh, that that would be all. I really well uh, send your applications right away. It's very easy. 
And in my case, well, uh, the, the plane uh, travel is not a negative factor. I'm traveling from Spain to, to Helsinki by, uh, by plane, and then I will take a train, but so it's not a negative factor at all. It's, it's very easy. Uh, maybe if now with the questions you, you want to ask me about something more specific that can help you? Well, uh, message uh, clear. And it also, it's, it's aligned with, with what we say in the office, that the experience itself is very good, very positive. Even if you don't get the grant, well, let's be clear, we all want to get the, the funds, the, the grant. But it's true that writing down the project, uh, trying to, to elaborate it, to align it with the, with, with the priorities in the project, with the requirements, it, it helps. It's a really... Yeah, well, in your case, um, we will actually maybe invite you again once you're back because you will have more things, but we are really thankful for these uh, first um, words uh, that you shared with us about your experience so far. So we are going to move to the questions uh, now then. Uh, Isabel is going to be managing uh, all these phase of the session uh, we know that uh, there are some questions that are targeted at a specific panelist maybe some of the others we cannot answer but we'll see so isabel i give you the floor thank you very much good morning everybody thank you for being with us uh, there are many many questions so well, don't worry. The questions that we don't answer right now, you can uh, share them with the Culture Moves Europe group. You can also contact the Creative Europe office. So you, you will get your answer, okay? But we have limited time now. So we will uh, read the questions out loud um, following the order of the questions uh, on the Q&A uh, section. There's also someone who raised their hand. Well, many of you, you, you sent your questions, but they were answered throughout the presentations. So we are going to try and answer the questions that ha haven't been answered yet. I'm going to give the floor to the person who raised her hand, Maria Angeles. I don't know if you are there. You can ask your question if you want out loud. Maybe you're muted. Maria Angeles, are you there? Ah, it was a mistake. Ah, okay, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, then we go ahead with the questions that you sent us in writing. The first one, good morning, please. It's about sustainable mobility, the green mobility from the Canary Islands. We have the option of using a Fred Holson ship with a new system with a lower environmental um, footprint. Uh, Valeria is asking, is, is that an option for us? Can we? I will answer. Uh, I think yes, of course. Uh, if it's not a plane, of course, it's uh, included in the mobility, in the green mobility option. So you can act, uh, you can apply for that uh, top up, of course. The uh, implementation uh, period is it the same uh, as the period of the call itself? Well, Loli, maybe you can answer you. Yes, what I understand from the question. Uh, let me check the. Oh, I, I understand whether you have to implement the project to finish the project uh, before the call uh, is closed, right? But in May, but no, no, as I said before, if the mobility agreement is signed in February, you have uh, a whole year until February the following year uh, to finish the project. It's always a year since the moment where when you sign the, the mobility agreement, regardless of uh, the call being open or closed already. Barbara, 
Uh, she's saying I'm from the Czech Republic. I live in Spain and I want to go to Czech Republic to create a duet with my sister. We received an invitation of an organization that offered us to have the artistic residency. Is it possible that just one of, is it possible that the grant is only for one of the people because only, there's only one person traveling to the destination country or the grant could cover also um, the person living there the project should be a, a duet should it be an application just for me yes uh, if the travel is to the Czech Republic only you should could receive the grant if your sister is living there, right? Only the person traveling will receive the grant. But for example, if your project is in Italy and you travel from Spain and your sister travels from the Czech Republic, then both of you could receive the grant. Always, uh, it, it needs to be an international travel of the person traveling. But if, if, the, if the project is in the Czech Republic, only you will be traveling, so only you will receive the grant. Another question. If it's an individual project, what kind of project can I uh, uh, apply for if my objective is to learn? Well, in this case, I cannot really give you an answer because uh, what Culture Moves Europe uh, tries is to give total freedom to the artist. So you can choose uh, any project you want. We don't offer ideas. We just uh, give you the information about the sectors that are uh, eligible, but it can be any personal project of your choice. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Yes, yeah, so, um, she's saying that she thinks that mm, she didn't explain herself very well. I don't know if you, if you can tell us more. Yes, hello. Thank you. My idea is to, I want to participate in some project and uh, to go somewhere to participate in a project, but I don't have a clear idea of what project. So I, I think maybe in that case, it would be a residency. Yes, in that case, it would be more a residency uh, action. There would there will be a host organization receiving artists that stay there and work with the organization. In this case, um, the, the organ this host organization will apply for the grant in the individual action is the individual artist who sends the application and you can choose the possibility, any possible organization. So if your idea is to participate in a project of another organization, it would be the residency action, yes. But is there then anywhere where I can check the projects, the residency projects where I could participate or, no, 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 in this case, there's, mm, no place where you can check for that information. There will be more information, as I said at the beginning of the year. I cannot tell you when exactly, um, but well, we have an idea to organize uh, a marketplace uh, sessions, sessions where organizations interested in uh, sending their applications and artists in, interested in uh, uh, carry out a residency uh, and we try to do a match maybe the the translator can help me with this i don't know how to say it in spanish but um so we have actions like that in our uh, planning but we don't know when they are going to be organized yet so I suggest that you follow Culture Moves Europe on our uh, social media so you can be updated about all the information that will come out on the residency action. Yes, we can maybe add something. Maybe the questions is for us. We do have our databases for uh, partners. We receive the information from all our uh, European partners and our cultural operators also uh, sent that. I understand that you don't have this service. Uh, so that's why you have those other sessions, which are very practical as well. I, maybe the question is uh, about that. Yes, yes, I was going to say that in our uh, search for partners section on our website in the Creative Europe office, we are beginning to receive uh, search 
for participants searching uh, options. So these organizations who which will be uh, paying attention to the next call that is going to be open for residences, they already started contact contacting us and they are sending their information to, to tell us that they are willing to receive artists in their organizations. So of course, uh, they will need to um, send their applications, be selected, receive a grant, and then well, but, uh, but yes, you can know that there are organizations that are looking for different professionals in the cultural sector and that you can check for those organizations on our website. Then we are going to continue with the next question. The daily allowance of 75 euros uh, can be uh, used for renting uh, accommodation. Yes, of course. Yes, the 75 euros are for everything you may need, uh, accommodation, meals. And I also want to say, I forgot before, if you send a group application, uh, the individuals are receiving the grant, uh, not the group as a total. It would be 75 euros per person, not for the whole group, okay? Next question, if the destination country require, if uh, once you get there, you need to travel to different cities, is that covered? You can uh, stop in a city and then go to a different city in the country and a different one? Well, this is a delicate question uh, because, uh, well, the project needs to have one single destination, but may this include different cities? Well, yes, if it's very well justified that you need to, to visit all those different cities for the project, okay? To maybe avoid uh, people who just want to travel around, okay? So if in your project, in the application, you explain very well and you justify that you need to visit this, this, and this other city uh, within the same country, well, yes, it's eligible, but you need to clearly justify the need. Next, can you travel with your own car? Yes. And for that, you could ask for the green travel uh, top up. Barbara and some other people are asking, uh, and they say it's not clear what are the outermost regions. Uh, so, is there a list of regions that we can uh, check uh, to see which ones are included? because they also asked whether the Balearic Islands are included, and I, I think maybe not, but I, I let you answer. Yes, yes, the Balearic Islands are included. Mm, also, all the regions that belong to uh, countries in the Creative Europe countries, but who are farther away, uh, different regions in France. In the case of Spain, we have uh, the Canary Islands, okay, in a, in a different continent, uh, but well, the Balearic Islands are within Europe, so they are also included. The list is on the website and also on all our social media. You have the list of all these other most and uh, overseas uh, regions. Uh, so the Balearic Islands, yes, yes, of course, it is. It's not considered outermost region, but it's uh, included. Okay. Lydia is asking, how can I offer my cultural space to receive artists from Europe? So it's again more related to residences. Is there any way to to offer? There's no, as we said, there's no um, portal or space for these, but we do have a section on our website for this kind of uh, searches. Pablo is asking whether he can offer himself as a partner to a researcher in the art sector in a university. Yes. Yes, as I said before, uh, uh, the international partner can, is, is the one you choose uh, as long as it's not an academic project because for this kind of mobility, you have other programs like Erasmus. Uh, so in this case, we want to offer the opportunity to all the people which are not just students, but yes, you can have a project with someone working at a university, of course. Uh, Gosha, did you raise your hand? Uh, 
at any moment. Gosha, yes. did you raise your hand? Yes, it was just to clarify. Actually, I was listening in English, so maybe uh, I understood in a different way the question of Balearic Islands. So they are included, they can apply as a part of Spain, but they are not uh, eligible to OCT uh, um, financial top up. And the, those list of the countries, it's not because of the distance, it's not because there is a sea between the continents that it's oversea territories. Those are uh, legal um, decisions uh, included in the European treaties. So you can, we will share, of course, to, uh, with you the lists, but both for outermost regions of the EU, there are nine ex exactly, and from the Spain, there are only Canary Island. And there are several uh, islands, most exotic islands for OCTs, uh, so uh, countries and ter territories. But most of them, they're from Denmark, Netherlands, and France. There are not uh, Spanish territories included in this. But we'll share in any case with you the list. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Gosha. Eh, no ha quedado muy claro. Thank you very much, Gosha. Uh, it, the, some participants still have doubts about the possibility to use uh, to travel by plane, if you can really further explain this. Yes, for those people with a destination uh, farther away than 600 kilometers, uh, it, well, the, there is a minimum requirement uh, and you cannot travel by plane. You need to use any other kinds of transportation. Once the destination is farther away than 600 kilometers, from the place where you reside, then you have the option to travel by plane or use a different uh, transportation uh, modality. In that case, the plane would be allowed. But if it's under 600 kilometers, the plane is not allowed. About the different disciplines, there are many uh, doubts about the audiovisual sector. You already explained that if it's an audiovisual project per se, they are not eligible. but some people are asking whether uh, in visual arts, maybe artificial, intelli artificial intelligence projects, or if they, if they are related to the uh, identified disciplines, if they are eligible. Yes, yes, in that case, it would be visual arts. Oh, photography, I also read if they were asking if uh, photography was uh, audiovisual. No, photography is included in visual arts. So in this case, it will be eligible. They gave us a, a specific example, and uh, maybe it helps us understand it better from the Hungary desk. They are asking us because they have a participant uh, who is going to uh, uh, work about the flamenco heritage in Spain, but the project in the end is a video, it's an audiovisual production. Would that be eligible? Uh, Uh, the pillar of the project needs not to be, cannot be audiovisual. It cannot be a project where the main objective is an audiovisual production. However, if in the project you explain that there are some audiovisual elements, like for example, if you are cooperating with a museum about the different kinds of uh, fishing activities or something, and you include the production of a video where you are including explanations that they're going to show in the museum, well, then yes. But the main objective was the investigation, the research about that uh, discipline, uh, fishing. Or, But in this case, for example, if the project is focused on uh, analyzing flamenco, the different aspects, uh, I don't know, I'm not the artist, but um, then you include the production of uh, a video, that audiovisual production, yes, but you need to justify in your application very clearly that the main sector uh, is uh, music or performing arts or uh, and not the production of the movie itself. Another question. We have the cooperation with the media project. We always insist on what you're saying. If the main objective is uh, an audiovisual production, is the media action. If you can include that within the project, in the culture project, yes, okay. But 
uh, for example, uh, you, you, we, it's very common to have in a, a contemporary dance project and you have a video. It's very common, but if the, the main objective is uh, the, the production of the audiovisual piece, then it will be for the media action that will be need to address your application. Of course, if you want to apply to the Culture of Europe grant, the audiovisual productions need to be something associated to the pro to the project, but not the main uh, objective of, of the project itself. The next question was already answered, whether the grants are individual or, or for groups. Uh, Loli explained that there are the two options, groups to up to five people. Uh, Loli can correct me if I'm wrong. Then the next question, can it be a mixed uh, team? Uh, which means could it be uh, artists, scientists, investigators, researchers in their team, uh, as long as it's an artistic team as a whole? Yes, we also receive this same question many times because there are projects that require four different um, skills. And I always answer the same. You need to justify everything very clearly in the application. Why you have all these members? Why do you need them for, for the project? Uh, that, that, it's just that. You just need to, to, the answer is always yes, but you always need to justify uh, everything very clearly. We have the application and we see that it's a dance project and we see an architect, we would be like, well, why is this person here, right? So if you justify everything, it's okay. They are also saying if it's a group of nine people, this is a, a, a trick quest, tricky question. Uh, can they present two different applications, one with five people and one with four people? No, we also receive this uh, question quite often, but no, you cannot apply uh, two different uh, times for a uh, same project. And could it be if it's different projects, but with the same international partner? Yes, that is possible and projects related to uh, sound art or radiophonic art, would that be included in the music discipline? Could you repeat the question, please? Yes, questions related to sound art or uh, audio documentaries or radio, C could that be included in music? Yes. Eva is asking, is this grant non-compatible with all the grants or you can ask for other funds uh, for the project? Uh, maybe here my colleague can help me, but no, it's not compatible. If it's a, uh, another grant coming from the European Union for the same project, if it's the same project, the same objective and during the same dates, uh, Gosha, if you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, so uh, the EU law forbids to have twice the grant for the same activity in the same dates. So this would not be possible, but in any case, there is no other option from the EU uh, opportunities to, to finance mobility. But of course, as I said, since this is just a contribution our grant, you can easily combine it with regional grants, uh, um, maybe from some universities, uh, this is absolutely compatible and we really encourage you to do so. Yes, that is uh, also something we always insist on. You cannot apply with the same project for two different uh, uh, grants in the European Union, okay? But they are compatible with other grants, as Gosha said, at a regional level. And, uh, well, that you can do. Anna is asking how she can... Uh, uh, apply as a host organization and as we said that's related to the call that will be open uh, later this month and you will find all the information in the culture most europe website and also on our website Emma is asking if the residency action uh, will have uh, also the top up for families with uh, children uh, under 10 year olds uh, uh, 10 year olds no in the in this case, uh, no, but I don't want to maybe anticipate because as I said before, we don't have all the information. We will have the information later on this month. In this case, uh, we're talking about the, uh, the individual top-up 
for artists traveling. I, I don't think it's going to be included in the residency action, but just in case, we'll check the information on the social media later on this month and uh, to, to make sure about this. Eva is asking uh, if you've received an opportunist uh, grant before, if it's uh, very negative, if uh, you've, uh, well, if you will have a disadvantage uh, if maybe it's a team with several people and one person in the team has received an opportunist grant before and another one hasn't if this is no there's no penalization per se you're not going to receive a lower score by the evaluators if you have participated in opportunists but it is true that if the person has already participated and uh, if the application uh, is accepted by the evaluators and there are two different projects with the same score, we will always try to benefit the person who has not received another grant before. Uh, but it's not going, it, it's not that we are going to penalize uh, someone who's received a grant before. But if there are many applications, uh, sometimes, well, of course, we will try to prioritize the person who has never received a grant before. Also, some people asked whether they need to uh, be a freelancer uh, to apply for this. Uh, no, it's not necessary to. No, 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 you don't need to be a freelancer. If you receive an individual grant in this call, could you uh, also apply for the residency action? We already said that it's different. Uh, it's addressed at different uh, participants. Are there organizations that are uh, assessed more positively than others museums uh, or, or all the organ no no it's the it's the decision of the artist the artist can choose any institution or organization of his or her choice we answered about the freelancers we remind you that you need to apply through the get institute portal uh, Lolly shared it on her presentation and as we said the presentation will be available on this uh, session's website that you see on our web. We share the link also on the chat and you will have the video of the session and also uh, uh, you can find it on our YouTube list. How can you find a place uh, to carry out, to implement your project? Well, as we already mentioned, you have the trans artist website. You also have the on the move platform with mobility opportunities for other uh, different countries. So you can have maybe like that, you can maybe have a little bit of a mapping of different options. We are also going to give the floor to some people who raise their hands. Nacho, if you can enable the microphones. Andrea, you have the floor. Good morning. No, I just wanted to ask something. Maria Dolores said something before, but I'm not, I didn't understand if I participate in the Culture Moves Europe program, could I uh, then participate in the residency action as well? No, in this case, you could uh, participate, but you could not send the application as a host organization. So if you know of a host organization that is going to apply and you want to be uh, an artist invited by, the, by them, you could do that. No, because I, I, I would be the residency uh, host organization. I would work with an artist where uh, the, the, the artist is, it's an artist from Poland and he will do the application and then us, we could apply to the other program, right? As a host organization. Well, let me see if I understood clearly. So right now you would be an international partner for an artist that is applying for the Culture Moves Europe action. And then you want to apply as a host organization. Yes, in that case, yes, you could do it because in that case, you're not receiving any grant. The artist is receiving his grant. And then for the residency action, 
you, your organization, would be applying for the grant. Thank you. We are going to give the floor to a couple more questions and a couple more on the chat. We are going to have five more minutes and we will close the session. We give the floor to Anna. Anna, we give you the floor. I think you are muted. OK, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you very much. I'm a sculptor and I have a project that works with sculpture and dance. We are three artists working, a dancer from Nigeria living in Spain and a dancer uh, living in the US. She's from the US. She's come to Spain to launch the project and getting it ready. And our idea is to uh, move this project in the US and in Europe. Could I apply uh, for the grant uh, for this project, including the artist, and she could come to my place in Spain and the three of us from here, we would take the project to other countries in Europe. I, I could, I wanted to know whether even if we're three, the grant would be for Peter and me, or both of us will live in Spain and Emily could come with us with or without the grant, but th that's my doubt. Yes, the person can go with you, but she couldn't receive the grant. She couldn't apply for the grant. There's something else which is also important. When you travel to another country, you need to have an international partner in that country. Yes, yes, I know. I know about that. Yes. I just wanted to know uh, if in the application, if I need to specify Emily will be joining the team because it's she's part of the project. And the three of us, we, we are as important uh, in the project. Then, then we have uh, maybe other dancers, but so when when I have to explain the project, I want to be clear in my application that she's going to be with us, but that the application for the grant is for Peter and myself because we are the ones living in Spain. He's from Nigeria, but he lives in Spain. He has a, he resides legally in Spain. So we could do that, right? Yes. I also wanted to clarify something else. I don't know if this is your case, but the objective, uh, of, you, you cannot go to another country just to present your project, just to maybe give a concert or no, no, no. Yes, that uh, that I understood. In our case, it would be to create a new choreography connecting with uh, someone incorporating uh, probably dancers or other artists from the place where we are traveling. So to, to create a new piece in a, in a new space as well. So the project would be that. Uh, it's not oh, okay. I I receive the grant and I go uh, perform my show. No, it's not that. It's a, a life uh, live pro living project. So we want to go to another country and create with the different artists uh, similar pieces. Okay, thank you. And then uh, Barbara, we're receiving like one hundred questions on the chat. So I'm sorry, but it's going to be impossible to answer all the questions. Uh, contact us afterwards. We are already five minutes uh, after the limit, but we're going to, to, to close shortly. Uh, Barbara, I'll give you the floor. Yes, my question is about the residence with my sister living in the Czech Republic. Um, the organization inviting me would be my sister or the residency organization because i understand that the the proof that you need to receive would be different right that maybe if it's the organization it would be the residency action yes that would be the other call but in this case you can apply for the grant uh, if it's your sister the international uh, partner that receives you in the czech republic but she would not receive the grant only the traveling artist and in that case because she's not an organization 
so she cannot sign an agreement with me or well she can yes send me maybe an invitation letter but she, the letter would have no stamps or so it would be just an email from here and maybe it's not so good as a proof document right no no but that's okay that wouldn't give you a lower score in the evaluation it is that well the evaluators prefer something official but well, I insist that the artist can always choose to work with uh, whoever he or she wants. So don't worry about that. Thank you. I think Gosha wants to clarify something. Yes, Gosha, you raised your hand. Yes, I think that there is one issue we should clarify concerning the uh, residency, legal residency in a, in a country covered by the Creative Europe and nationality. So uh, sometimes people with different nationality from other countries do not feel concerned, but uh, like people from Latin America, I have seen a question in a chat about Latin America. So we, if you have uh, people living in Spain, legally residing in Spain, but with uh, Latin American nationalities, they are absolutely entitled to, to apply as well. Uh, also more uh, exotic uh, nationalities uh, as well. This we are not looking at. We are asking this question just for our um, for statistics for information so that we know who are uh, reaching out but uh, it's the country of residence just thank you gosh the two last questions we're going to give the floor to marta and then we have another question for anna uh, after marta we have another question for you anna Hello, thank you very much. I am a literary translator and I'm part of a collectivity. Uh, we are nine people. I'm sorry about uh, my naive question before asking about whether we can opt for five and four people separately. Uh, we already have an agreement with the host organization an institution in France. They already sent us an agreement. We signed everything and we have the project ready, but we are leaving on February 24. So I don't know whether we are in time to to apply for the grant. No, in this case, uh, you are late because the next deadline is January 31st. And as I was uh, telling you, we need those weeks uh, to evaluate the agreement, the agreements, the, the signing the agreements. If it's February 24th, um, I think you're late. Well, but we can. I'm going to look for another residency. So maybe before May 31st, we could apply for another one in the following months. Even if for this one with Salem Oriak, we don't have time. Yes, oh, that's a pity. Mm, that's a pity. Uh, well, I'm sure that you will have uh, other projects. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we are a group we have a common project so we can apply for more but in, in this case because uh, in this case they are offering the residency but we don't have any money for the travel or for the accommodation there uh, i don't know if maybe you can delay the residency the agreement you have well i think it's difficult because uh, it's uh they're fully booked and this was the only uh, time they have had available for the year but well i suggest that you uh, check the calendar on the presentation we're going to share you have all the deadlines there when the calls are open all the one the time for each phase so as you see there we suggest that you send the uh, application three months in advance and there is where you can see when would be a good date a realistic day to to send your application Yes, well, in this case, it's the day they offered us. So we are we are uh, literary translators. We cannot pick the date. <laughs> it's uh, it all depends on the availability of the residency in the host organization. The... So for us, uh, managing that uh, three month uh, period to send it in advance is it's quite difficult. <laughs> well, but now you have all the information. So for future projects, well, thank you very much. 
And the last question, because we we need to close the session. Uh, it's uh, for Anna, the beneficiary from Spain. Anna, they are asking us uh, whether you can explain a little bit about how you um, managed all the accommodation things, all your project. Well, in my case, for five years uh, uh, in the summer, I've been traveling to another Europe country. I've been in uh, Denmark, in uh, Belgium. And uh, after these experiences uh, and after uh, meeting artists from other disciplines, I try to I, i'm a painter as i said and i wanted to um, to put that together with everything that i lived with these experiences it's very different from what i do so i already had this project in my mind to to do it in in the summer 2023 and uh what I did was I looked for uh, an international partner. I actually found it in Transarted, or one of both, or both the both platforms that you mentioned. And once I was accepted, my, I checked for the possible grants that I could apply for. And even before I knew how the application was going to be like, I, I wrote on my project. So I'm a little nervous because I'm going sorry i'm going to plug my computer uh, because i have a low battery can you hear me okay can you hear me okay yes go ahead <laughs> sorry i was i was afraid it was going to shut down in the middle of a question uh, can you hear me maybe there's a little bit of an echo yes it's okay but we don't have much time so don't worry I already had my project in mind, so um, it's not like, well, I saw the grant and I thought, mm, what could I do? No, I already had my project. And uh, so I looked up uh, for possible grants. I saw this one. I read the requirements. It's very simple. As I said, it's everything is very clearly explained. And so I have my project, but I need to adapt the information I have to the things that they are uh, asking me in the application. So that's why I said that it's very easy. If you have the application, you take all those questions out on a Word document, you copy them, and you try to adjust all the information you have to the things that they need you to explain for them. Okay, so, and, and I sent it and I really received an answer very quickly. I don't know if that answers you. Thank you, Anna. Yes, uh, that would be um, all for the Q&A uh, session. I give the floor to Augusto. Sorry, we are receiving questions also uh, via email, but I'm sorry, the webinar duration is one hour, 30 minutes. Uh, we always uh, are thankful for uh, Nacho's help and uh, Anna Maria for the interpreting. Uh, if there are other questions, we will try to answer you uh, via email. If not, you have the question, the email that Lolly uh, offered you to contact them. And uh, well, that will be all. We saw that the, this was interesting because we have a great number of participants uh, and we have many, many questions. Sorry, we are uh, overwhelmed with all the questions. Please answer the questions in the survey that we will send you. It's very helpful for us. And well, thank you very much to everyone, to Gosha, to Loli and Anna, who are the ones that really presented all the interesting information in the session. Uh, Happy New Year also to everyone, to all of you, and we'll see you next time.